Good morning, everybody, and welcome to yet another Z Learning feature with us here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Those of you who are just joining us now, I am Milo, and I am very excited to go on our adventure here this morning. Now, those of you who've already been on social media yesterday, you know that we are not talking about what I'm standing in front of right now. We are not taking a spin around the carousel, even though it is pretty quiet on the side of Riverbanks this morning. I wanted to give you a little bit more of a lay of the land, kind of where we're heading today, because we are going to head pretty deep behind the scenes into our kind of backstage area here at Riverbanks. Now this morning, I did want to take a quick second though, before we went back there and kind of shown you what is going on in one of our very essential areas here at Riverbanks, our commissary, which to translate to something that you might hear more often is our main kitchen. It's our big hub. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see all you joining in. Thanks for joining in everybody. Good morning, Emily. Nice to see ya. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in. We cannot say thank you so genuinely and enough for all of you who are tuning in during our temporary closure with all of our Z learning adventures. Nice to see all of you this morning. Now you might notice a couple of different things about me this morning. I have gloves on because we're going to be heading into our kitchen area. So we definitely want to have kind of our, our PPE, our personal protective equipment on, which includes our nitrile gloves. And you might notice under my chin, I have a face mask, which I will be putting on once we get in our behind the scenes area. But for right now, since it's just me and all of you tuning in right now, I went ahead and pulled it down so that way you can kind of hear me a little bit better. But today, hopefully you're able to hear me through that mask because we are going to go behind the scenes inside of our commissary kitchen and there will be a handful of staff working in that area so of course we're going to practice our social distancing as best as we possibly can and sometimes some tight quarters but we want to give you the best possible view for z learning so we'll make sure to have our ppe on our masks our gloves all of our commissary technicians are going to have them on with me this morning. In fact, we're not the only ones here at Riverbanks that are doing those protective measures, not only for all of our staff members here at Riverbanks during these uncertain times, but also for all of the animals that we care for. You might have noticed in recent news that there has been coming up in our stories is we are actually wearing our protective masks and gloves in certain animal areas. In fact, we're striving to do it in all sorts of areas. So today for Z Learning, you're gonna join me along with, maybe you have a mask at home that you could even put on, so that way you can pretend you're right here with me here at Riverbanks. But here in just a second, we're actually going to head behind the scenes to start to get that up close view of our commissary kitchen. Now, commissary kitchen doesn't sound too glamorous, but it is essential. When we are temporarily closed, our animals still need to eat and our keepers are here to take care of them. All those caretakers, our veterinary staff are all here reporting to duty to make sure everything is as normal and we are providing our top notch animal care. Oh, here, let me go ahead and turn around the camera, give you a little bit more of a view. We're going into staff only. Let's go ahead and turn around the corner. We'll start to give you a quick peek of not one of our animal areas behind the scenes, but actually where our kitchen is. So if you see that vehicle over there, that's actually where we're heading. But this is one of our very essential areas here at Riverbanks. Now, all of these staff members have been reporting to duty as normal. In fact, there's about five of them right now in our kitchen that are busy working, making our diets. I will say I kind of, I'm a little late here to the game because all of these staff members have been here since before 7 a.m. So those of you at home that slept in this morning, hats off to the commissary technicians because they have been here prepping our animal diets not only for today but also for tomorrow so that way all of our animal residents are eating their healthy meals as per usual now a question that we've been kind of hearing buzz around everyone's really curious because i know i have the same question with buying my own personal groceries during these times are our animals still able to eat the foods that we typically feed them now, I just had a quick meeting with our commissary manager who actually oversees the entire area. And Dave was explaining to me that business is as normal. We've been able to get all of our shipments. We've had to make some minor adjustments, but overall, all of our animals are eating the exact same foods that they would typically eat. In fact, our commissary staff were so professional, they went ahead and prepared in advance, got some extra shipments, stocked up our freezers full, our refrigerators full, 
and made sure that we had all the grains, produce, meats, and all the different foods that our animals eat every single day. So those of you who are just tuning in, we're gonna head into our kitchen and Jennifer actually just asked a great question. I'm so glad you asked, Jennifer. Will we see animals today? Yes, besides just me, you are gonna see some animals because if I remember correctly, I think the commissary staff are in charge of all of those different animal diets. They make over 300 every single day for our, gosh, over 2,000 different animal residents. And they actually have a diet that they prepared for us, you all, and me to actually take out and go feed to some of our animal residents. So stick along for the adventure because our grand finale is actually going to be feeding a snack to our otters this morning. Let me go ahead and turn around the camera because we are gonna head on into commissary. But before I do so, let me go ahead and get my mask on, make sure we are good to go. All right, everybody, let's head on into commissary for an up close view. So through these doors is where all those commissary technicians are busy working. Let's go ahead and peek in the window and head on in. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see all of you this morning. We are live here in our commissary kitchen. And right now you can see all of our different staff not only have their gloves on, their masks on and they're distancing at their different stations. Now everything's very well organized here in the area of our kitchen. Not only for everyone to social distance while they work, but also so that way we can make sure there's no cross contamination between all the different foods that we have here at Riverbanks. So right now we have a couple of different staff that are working on produce. Our produce comes in fresh on a regular basis. In fact, we're still working with local farmers markets here in the area. You can see some of our green bell peppers, some of our celery, and some of our citrus fruits on the bottom too. And you might be able to see, we're gonna to try to make our way around as everyone's busy prepping all these different diets. Like I said, it's about, it was over 300 that we prepare each and every single day. And you notice that all those little containers are well labeled here. I'll even point so that way you can kind of see a little bit better. All those containers are well labeled so that way they know exactly which animals are to receive them and where they need to be delivered to. Now, those of you who are healthy eaters out there, which should be all of you, you're familiar with what we're looking at right now, a bunch of kale, some collard greens as well, apples, which I will say are actually our most popular food. We get the most number of apples in, along with carrots below, bananas, of course, and our commissary staff are busy chopping up, measuring out, weighing out. It is quite the science. I know when I'm in my kitchen, which I don't spend a ton of time in, I'm not nearly as much of a, a cook as some might be, but I don't always measure things out perfectly. That is not the case here in our commissary building. Everything is weighed, chopped, and measured perfectly for our animal residents. We wanna make sure that they are getting a healthy meal, including romaine lettuce. Now you notice that they have these diet cards that actually have all the details of what goes on inside of them. Let's actually take a peek quick over here. Those of you at home, you might recognize this name if you're a Riverbanks regular. Senzu is one of our adult male gorillas here and this entire box of fresh produce is all for him. That means this entire thing is just one day's worth of food. Now in order to figure out all of that, our commissary staff actually left one of these for me to check out. This is the entire gorilla diet for Senzu to eat throughout the day. You can see cabbage, kale, romaine, banana, bell pepper, carrot, celery, cucumber, green beans, and even kiwi fruit as well. Our gorillas, our male gorillas at least, eat right around 30 pounds of produce. So it means veggies and fruits every single day. Now, like I said, hopefully these are familiar ingredients to all of you because you are eating just as healthy. In fact, that's actually a part of our Z learning activity today. I want you to kind of check out all the similarities and the differences that you see between our commissary area and your kitchen at home. Let's turn this around and check on where we're making our bird diets this morning. Now, I will be honest here. Let's go ahead and social distance a little bit. We're going to make our way around over here to some of the ingredient stations. Out of all the diets that we prepare here at Riverbanks, our bird diets are easily the most complex. Birds are pretty small animals as far as weight. In fact, if you joined us yesterday, you remember Sam said, our flamingos only weigh five pounds each, so their diet and the weight of their diet is very important. Heather just tuned in. She was wondering, do they eat blueberries? Absolutely. In fact, Heather, if you take a close look at this medley that we're staring at right now, there's a bunch of blueberries inside too. 
Now what our commissary technicians actually have to do is they have to kind of pre-make a recipe of sort, all these different ingredients go into one, and then they'll take a look at all those different cards and weigh them out then for that next step. So you can see them on all those different scales as we're in action right now. And then you see that they're stacking the different trays upon one another. The reason why they're doing that is eventually they leave the main kitchen, the diets, and head to where the animals live. And by stacking them in that specific order, we can separate out the foods and make sure that all of our birds are getting exactly what they are supposed to eat. Those of you who are wondering how many people are working here in the kitchen, we have five right now, excluding myself. I'm just a visitor this morning. So there are five people very diligently working to prepare a very essential part of our animal's daily routine. Now, I did mention earlier that we are actually going to take one of these diets and actually deliver it to some of our animal residents this morning. So I hope that some of you tune in and join us for one of the feedings. But I wanna go ahead and turn around our camera again. Well, there's a different section that we missed. We talked a lot about produce. We talked a lot about bird diets. We haven't talked a lot about meat. Not all of our animals eat just plants. In fact, we have lots of different types of meat here at the zoo that our animals eat. In fact, one of our technicians are opening up something that might make some of your stomachs churn, so we won't necessarily dwell on it. In fact, we'll head into a freezer and get a better view. But our lions don't really have a taste for carrots. They want meat, as do some of our other animal residents. So let's check in onto our freezer and see some of those other examples. You see all these big buckets right here? One, two, three, six, Ooh, seven it looks like. Those are all filled with fish for our seals and sea lions. And those of you at home are wondering, well, gosh, that is a lot of buckets. That must get us through a long time here at Riverbanks. It does not. That is one day's worth of food. Isn't that amazing to think that in one day, all of those residents at Sea Lion Landing will devour all of that. Now, right now we're actually in one of our coolers. It might get a little dark. You might not be able to see nearly as well, but I do want to point out all of this different produce. Now we strive to actually source our produce as locally as possible. Like I said, we work with those different farmers markets in the area. So that way we're getting fresh, locally sourced, so it's more sustainable and healthy for our animals. But wait a second, you're also gonna notice while we are here in our commissary, there is no moldy food, there is no bru bruised food. This is not the day old stuff. This is all human grade animal food. In fact, everything that we feed our animal residents here would be good enough for you to eat. In fact, let me check out a little bit more here in our fridge. Now, if you take a look at this stack, we were just over in the bird station not too long ago. All of them actually pre-prepared bird diets. So they're all stacked up among, look at, they have little covers on so that way they stay fresh. But that entire list is to organize where they need to go. So that way the right animals are going to receive them. Y'all are asking such great questions. In fact, I just saw Jill ask a question. What do our otters eat? Well, they eat a whole lot of fish. In fact, they eat a very similar diet to what our sea lions would eat. Not necessarily squid. Let's open up another bucket. Let's see what's inside of here. Oh, crack it open. That's a much better example. Our otters are definitely going to be eating fish this morning. Those of you who are noticing that our cell service isn't so great, it's because I'm in a refrigerator. But this is the container I wanted to grab here so that way we can bring it on out to where our otters need to go this morning. Now, before we head out of our commissary, I want to give you all a closer look to uh, some of those other diet cards. So you notice some of our other diet cards that actually include capelin, smelt, trout, romaine, all sorts of different fish for all of our different animals that love to eat seafood. One quick overview before we head out. Oh, actually, wait a second, shame on me. I forgot all these dry goods. Do you see all these different chows up here? Those of you who have dogs or cats at home, they eat kind of a similar sort of idea, that dried dog or cat food. I know my dog at home eats dried dog food. Now, all of these, of course, are not dog and cat food. Instead, these are made specifically for animals with different dietary needs. So there's actually companies that produce all of these different ingredients and make them nutritional for 
sometimes pigs, sometimes omnivores like our bears, or even some of our other primates. So there is quite a mix of fresh, dry, and sometimes frozen food that we actually feed out to our animal residents here. Now, let's go ahead and turn this camera around because I went ahead and grabbed this container, which has some pretty special snacks in it for our otter friends. And we're actually going to bring it down over to otter here in just a second. So let me go ahead and turn around this camera. Thank you all so much for being here. Y'all are essential here to Riverbanks. We're gonna say see you later to our commissary technicians. And we're gonna peek in one more freezer. Let's grab our bucket quick. And we're gonna head on in to see some of those frozen items too. Let's actually ugh, open this up. We're not gonna stay too long. It's very chilly for me here. All of you at home don't have it nearly as cold. But if you see all those different boxes, you notice frozen squid, frozen fish on some of them. This is a great example of how we prepped in advance for our temporary closure. So by making sure to getting all these orders in, we made sure to stock up on our needed food so that we are able to feed our animals all the proper diets that they are meant to receive. Emily, I couldn't agree with you enough. Thank you to all those technicians. They are so essential to us providing those healthy diets here at Riverbanks. Make sure to close the freezer. Let's go ahead and turn this camera around again. All right, my hands are a little full. I'm juggling the camera, the diets. We're back out in the fresh air. I'm actually here by myself, so let me go ahead and pull this mask down. So that was such a great example of a really true behind the scenes look here at what we do at Riverbanks to provide top quality animal care. Now, those of you who are along for the ride, that was a pretty quick tour, I'll be honest. There was a whole lot we could cover, but I have a pretty good feeling that Z Learning has some other adventures up our sleeve. So we might actually head back over to commissary maybe in the coming weeks. I have a good feeling we might because there was so much that we weren't able to cover in that just brief amount of time. Now I threw out some numbers. In fact, you also might notice in our caption today that each and every day it costs us about $1,800. So $1,800 to feed our animal residents. That's a pretty expensive daily budget, especially during our temporary closure. So it is very essential that we have all of those foods because Top quality animal care is what we are all about here at Riverbanks. Thanks everybody who's still tuning in right now because we have a bit of a walk to do right now. We are actually heading through the park because otters are all the way over by our main entrance and we're gonna head over to that main plaza. Ooh, Rory wants to know how many pounds of food does the kitchen prepare each day? Well, Rory, that's a great question and honestly, I don't know that answer because it's changing each and every day. Our keepers, our veterinary staff work so close with those technicians to make sure our diets are up to date and represent the needs of all of our animals. Sometimes we have new animals born, we have animals moved to other facilities. So those recipe cards truly are changing and adapting with all of our animal needs. So as we start to stroll around, let's see, actually we're walking right in front of our lion habitat. Let me go ahead and turn around the camera. So that way y'all can see what our lions are up to this morning. Look at our entire lion pride. I know all of you wanted to see some animals this morning. Eventually we'll get over to otters. But you can see they're relaxing in the shade. This is everybody, this is all eight of them. <laughs> what a great view, you guys. All right, what other kind of questions are we getting in here? Here, let me go ahead and see if I can really multitask. Now I will say a big shout out to a couple of my team members, um, my coworkers, Sam and Jordan actually, work in our communications department as well. And right now they're answering quite a lot of your questions too. They knew that I would have my hands full between fish and a bucket for otters and heading on over to the otter habitat. So thank you both so much. Sam and Jordan, I could not do this without you. So those of you who are asking questions, you might be getting them answered by them if I might be missing them but it's always our goal to try to get to all the questions. Actually, let's go ahead and pause. I just waved to one of our keepers here. Let's go ahead and say good morning. This is Alexa. She's actually one of our mammal keepers. Good morning, Alexa, nice to see you. She's hanging out in our baboon exhibit, which thankfully 
has no baboons in it. <laughs> they are all shifted off exhibit and she made sure to service and clean. But you notice that she had her gloves on and everything, but since she was by herself, she went ahead and pulled her mask down. So that way she can social distance on her own while she services that habitat. Now we're not too much further away from otter. So let me go ahead and tell you a little bit more about what's in here. So our commissary staff prepared this diet in advance for us. It's actually smelt which is a type of fish. I'll show you here in a second when we have a second to pause, but it's a main part of our otter diet. Now that smelt is actually going to be put into some enrichment devices and we're actually going to together feed the otters. So once we head over to your, to the otter run habitat, we're going to go ahead and stuff them into those balls and actually surprise our two otters, Savannah and Sophia Grace have no idea that they are going to get fed by all of you this morning. So thank you for your help for joining us this morning. But let me go ahead and switch my camera around one more time. I went ahead and hit them over here. There's some enrichment balls. These are plastic balls with holes drilled in them. They're actually called boomer balls. And what we are going to do together on my little workstation I've made here in our viewing area, let's go ahead and crack this open. Our fish are hiding right in here. Ooh. Bon Appetit. How delicious does this look? You've all been wondering what our otters eat. Here it is. This is what they're going to enjoy today. And here in a second, we're actually going to toss them into our otter habitat. So let's go ahead. Since I have my gloves on, I'm wearing my personal protective equipment. And we're going to go ahead and start sliding them in some of these balls. Now keep those questions coming because there's a very specific reason why we chose to do otter food with otter enrichment in this habitat. It's because tomorrow at 10 a.m. we are actually gonna be joined by one of our otter keepers and head inside the otter habitat for our own Z-learning adventure. So there's my plug. There's a commercial of sorts for tomorrow's fun that we're going to have, but we have four of these containers to fill up and we're gonna drop in all those different fish together Right now it's just me and all 500 of you. So let me go ahead and speed this up because y'all didn't come here to watch me stuff enrichment balls with fish. Instead, you want to see the otters enjoying them. Now I will say, we're gonna have a whole lot of fun tomorrow with the otters. So today is going to be pretty brief. It's gonna be fast. We're gonna toss them in and then I might leave you hanging a little bit because Tomorrow is when we are going to have all of the fun with our otters. Let's see if I can balance these. All right, I haven't dropped any yet. We're looking pretty good. So we're gonna take these enrichment containers, all these enrichment balls, and we're actually going to toss them quick into otter and see where our ladies head out. Now it looks like our keepers are actually busy cleaning these viewing windows this morning. There's one ball in, two, third one. Let's go ahead. We're gonna toss this one right into the water, making sure to avoid the otters. We don't wanna bump them on the head. And then one on land over here in the grass. Let's get a closer look. There's one of our otter sisters hanging out right here. <laughs> she went right for the ball and decided to bring it over into the water. Let's turn this around. Let's head on over. Let's get a closer look at those otters enjoying what our commissary technicians went ahead and prepped for them this morning because they put a whole lot of work into making those diets perfect for our animals. Ooh, let's see, trying to get a better view of where they are. Let's go ahead and play I Spy. <laughs> if you look, there's one of our balls floating by. Let's see if they, she, she can get that smell out of that little hole. This is a great form of enrichment, just like we did earlier this week with our meerkats. This is a great way to stimulate natural foraging behavior, kind of that predatory behavior. They have to find that fish, get it out themselves. And these two otter sisters are doing a great job at that. Now, remember, today is just a teaser for otter enrichment because tomorrow morning, Friday morning at 10 a.m., we're gonna answer all of your otter questions and we're going to focus entirely on these two sisters. So if you have anything that you're curious about, you have between now and tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We're gonna go live right here at Otter Run to talk all about otter enrichment and otter care. We're gonna head inside the habitat and prep them a very exciting surprise. 
Let's see if we can get a little better of a look here. It looks like they actually brought a couple on land. So let me go ahead and turn around this camera one more time. We're doing a lot of juggling this morning. Let's see, can you see one of those characters? She has the ball in her mouth right now. <laughs> I wonder if she's emptied out all of the surprises. Now, that was quite the preview for what we're gonna be doing tomorrow, but hopefully you learned something new on our adventure this morning during our very quick tour of commissary. Hopefully you were able to check out some of those amazing healthy diets that we provide for all of our animal residents in our care. Now, if you have any questions, keep typing them in. We want to get to them as fast as we can between myself, Sam, and Jordan, and we'll go ahead and answer all those curiosities you have about not only our kitchen, but also start to answer some of the questions that you have about river otters as well and how excited you are for tomorrow's feature. Now, once again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here at Z Learning. I had a blast with y'all this morning, but tomorrow is going to be a great way to end out the weekdays with a Friday morning, 10 o'clock at Otter. But I cannot say thank you enough, everybody, and have a great rest of the day, and join me tomorrow for our next wild Z-learning adventure. Until next time.